Hi, everybody. It's me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, everybody. It's me, Madge. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about something uh, serious here in my lesbian studio. I hope you like my new female T-shirt. Um, I know I do. It was only five dollars. Actually, I think it was two fifty at the um, at the store where they sell all the lube for the gays and the dildos. But for some reason, they had a nice lesbian shirt. Anyway, um, I wish I could remember the name of the store. Male something. I should promote them, right? Because it was so cheap. Mail. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, it's on Holstead Street here in Chicago. Uh, I want to talk to you about this Ruth Bader Ginsburg replacement. I, I, it's hard for me to express what I want to say, but I'll try to keep it brief and keep it real, bitches. But I'm disappointed in the way the Democrats gave up on the fight because I'm at the point where I'm not really interested in... I, I'm disappointed in people talking about Amy Con- Coney Barrett's religion and that weird sect she belonged to. I think the conversation really needs to more be about the process and the fact that it's extremely hypocritical to say that we couldn't replace, we couldn't let Obama choose his appointee when he had 10 months to go and we, and steam, you know, and Mitch McConnell steamrolled that appointment with uh, Gorsuch or whatever, whoever, whatever the fuck, uh, who is the one that was supposed, to, I always get it mixed up. Anyway, um, who who is who in that? But in any case, you know, Mitch McConnell uh, took a big dump on President Obama's appointment, which was totally wrong, um, albeit slightly constitutional, I guess. And instead of fighting about the process, Democrats fought over uh, Kavanaugh himself and attacked the the um, you know the the morality or whatever they you know the, they called him a rapist and all that shit and did that whole. Uh, bread and circus show about that and of course they lost i think sometimes we need to learn for from our mistakes i think we need to first do two things so my problem is really that i here's what i'm afraid of trump litigates everything if you look at his history he does hundreds of lawsuits a year he he does lawsuits when he doesn't want to pay his bills he sues people when they say the slightest thing nasty about him he sues to stop the process he sues everyone for any reason he possibly can if it's too you know he'll he's just completely amoral and he sues everyone so my point in saying that is that he's going to sue if he loses the election period and it's going to go to the supreme court it will it's just his history he will find some way to sue, regardless of how big Biden wins by, assuming he does win. And that's another story. But uh, regardless of by how much he loses, Trump will force the issue to go to the Supreme Court, I believe. And by loading the Supreme Court and by getting this new justice, he will win the presidency another four years. That's why all the Republicans are willing to die on this issue, because they know that. So how do we stop them? Well, the Democrats have said many times there's nothing procedurally they can do, and they've given up. They've just given up. So that's it. So we're just going to lose the Supreme Court. Uh, we're going to lose the right to, uh, uh, to uh, have an abortion. We're going to probably lose the Affordable Care Act and the right to uh, you know get insurance regardless of pre-existing conditions. That's huge. That's fucking huge. So back to the way it was before Affordable Care Act. Now, I know there's a lot of serious issues with that, which is why I support Medicare for all as a replacement, which, I mean, can you imagine this getting passed under this kind of a Supreme Court? I mean, getting it maintained under this kind of a Supreme Court. But the thing is, the as, as imperfect as the Affordable Care Act is, it keeps people with... Um, with very serious conditions, the people that need insurance the most from being denied coverage. And the way it was before that, many of you may not remember how it was before the Affordable Care Act. It was a fucking nightmare because you get denied coverage for any time you need it. And there's also limit lifetime limits. It's so much worse uh, for people who are sick for people who are healthy and are never going to die. It's great though, because your premiums are lower, but that's another story. Anyway, so my point is that there's a good chance we'll lose that. And there's, uh, and for all I know, uh, this person might even rule against the gay marriages that are already in place. I might lose my marriage. And, but the other thing is that this person, uh, Amy Comey Barrett, that they really haven't talked much about in the media because it's all about morality and shit, is that she has never voted in favor of a consumer. She's always voted in favor of business, which means consumers will have less rights 
even fewer rights. So we're fucked. But in any case, you know, but the Democrats have said there's no sort of procedural way to get around this. So it's up to us, the people of the United States, to rise up and do something about it. We have to demonstrate. We have to do what it takes to change a handful of voters' minds so that this doesn't happen. That means getting out on the streets. It means fucking screaming. It means civil disobedience. It means direct action. It may mean getting arrested. It means doing serious things because this is a serious fucking issue. We have to stop this appointment from happening before the election. We have to. We have to get out there and demonstrate because sometimes people on the streets are the only thing that change people's mind. We have to scare them. We have to make these people's lives miserable if they don't stop this. I mean, it's, those are not nice things to say, and it's not politically correct to say that, but that's what we have to do. We have to stop this. It's up to the people because the people in Congress, the Democrats, aren't going to do shit with their shit-filled diapers and their refrigerators and all that fucking nonsense. They're not going to do anything. They're just going to say, well, all you have to do is vote. Well, voting is great. I vote in every election, but direct action is where it's at. Direct action is the only thing that's going to save us. So I'm trying to inspire everybody to rise up, to demonstrate, to stop this process, to stop this nomination from happening. If we have to go outside of Congress and physically create a barrier so they can't vote, I don't even know if that works with COVID. But some way, there has to be a way. There is a way. It's Sometimes you just have to go outside of the normal way of thinking and just fucking be determined and stop it. But we just can't allow this. We can't allow this because we'll regret having done nothing if we let this happen. Because it doesn't matter... You, Trump will have another four years if this lady gets through. That's just how it. That's just how it is. So I, again, I, I hear some weird, like strange um, cognitive dissonance. They'll say, "Well, w- we just have to vote, and then we can, you know, fix this and pack the court." Really, you 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 think we're going to be able to pack the court when we can't even get a decent health care plan through? Give me a break. That's fucking nonsense. We have to stop this now. Good luck, and let me know if there's a, a demonstration in Chicago. I will join you.